From Paula Dean to Black Santa, the year 2013 has been chock full of cultural controversy, but none seems to have stuck to the American psyche quite like Duck Dynasty. After comparing homosexuality to bestiality and insinuating that African Americans were perfectly happy in the Jim Crow era South, just a singing and a and a picking. Uh, <laughs> Bill Robertson, the 67-year-old professional duck hunter and duck dynasty star, has unleashed a public debate about the First Amendment, gay rights, and race. Since A&E decided to suspend Robertson from the network over his remarks in a GQ interview, Robertson's supporters have come to his defense in a big way. Over a quarter of a million people have signed a petition at istandwithbill.com demanding that A&E reinstate Robertson on the show. Two days after removing Duck Dynasty related products from its shelves, the Cracker Barrel restaurant chain apologized to its customers for offending them and put the products back in their stores. And now an Alabama lawmaker is actually announcing plans to formally support Mr. Robertson on behalf of every Alabaman, presumably including the LGBT and black residents, with a resolution in the state Senate. Phil Robertson should not be penalized in any way for practicing freedom of speech, the resolution reads, but should be celebrated as a hero for courageously revealing his self-truth and Christian ideals in a world that can be unkind toward those with a conservative mindset. Well, there you go. Joining us now is Executive Director of the Log Cabin Republicans, Gregory T. Angelo. Thank you so much for being here, Gregory. My pleasure. So you have proposed a moonshine <laughs> summit. That's right. With whom? And how has your request been received? So, you know, in the immediate aftermath of Phil Robertson's comments that were leaked by, you know, by GQ magazine, yep. there was a knee-jerk reaction from many on the left. There was a lot of vitriol from both sides. There were, there were, you know, people on the socially conservative right banging the evangelical Christian drum, and then there were liberals on the left, limousine liberals coming in from Los Angeles, wagging their finger, trying to admonish Phil Robertson and the entire Robertson household, saying, "Get this guy off television." What we did is we decided, hey, there's no better people to make make the case for gay equality than the gay conservatives and log cabin Republicans. Rather than come in from Los Angeles, we decided to come in from the other LA, Louisiana, and make the case that we are strong conservatives. We're also strong Christians. Certainly many of our members are strong Christians. And it's not a zero-sum game when it comes to being uh, a, a Christian and a supporter of equal rights for gays and lesbians. And I can think of no better family to make that case to than the Robertson household. And that's why we, in a, in a, in a, in a kind of tongue-in-cheek way, call this a moonshine summit to take some of the intensity off this debate. Let's remember, we're talking about a reality television show here right. that's ignited a national controversy. But to also that say that we're trying, to, we're trying to meet you in the middle on this and let's, let's start the conversation here. And the thing is, this is really the final frontier, at least as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to the gay equality debate in this country. And that is a debate with the evangelical Christian community. Okay. It's a community that has long been ignored by gay advocates, and we see this as a great opportunity to directly engage Okay, Gregory. But very well, very eloquently stated, uh, limousine snark aside. Um, but let me, there was some snark in your introduction, too, so all right. I ain't got no limousine. Well played, very well, well, well received. Okay, so listen, so you're talking about meeting in the middle, but let's talk about where this middle is, okay? Yeah. Eric Erickson um, of the Red State blog uh, posted in support of Phil Robertson, and this is what he said. He said, Phil Robertson did nothing wrong. He just did not shy away from the parts of accepting Christ that make people uncomfortable. He loves people so much he is not willing to give people a fast pass to hell, to hell, by telling them they are not sinners. He did not judge. He just held up the yardstick and a whole lot of people did not like seeing it and realized they've fallen short. Where is the middle on someone who believes that because you are gay, you are going to hell, that you yourself are a sin, that your entire being is sinful. Where do you find the middle on that? Well, it's important to point out that hey, people are entitled to their beliefs, their opinions, their freedom of speech. But you you said can you're say what meet you like, but, but we can meet them on the middle when it comes to things like equal rights for gays and lesbians. Do and the fact Phil is, Robertson's you have to engage. Go for that? Do you think he's for equal rights for gay and lesbian Americans? The Based only way you can statement. find out is if you ask people first. And that's, the, the, that's what's happened on the left is that people didn't ask. People didn't want to put the conversation out there. They immediately wanted to admonish. And so we decided to come out and be arbiters. Well, Karen, there. it's true. We didn't ask whether or not black people really might have been happier during uh, the, the days of segregation. Well, we might have wanted to ask. I think, but I do think people did try to ask and say, wait a second, what's really going on here? And I think part of what happened, as someone whose own grandfather called her a sin because I'm mixed race, let me tell you, I think, you know, looking at his comments, what bothered me the most was that the right went so quickly to talking about freedom of religion and freedom of speech, particularly around the LGBT comments, and totally blew off the ridiculousness of the idea that, you know, picking cotton in the heat and singing 
you're happy, it's all good, and that's a mythology that I know Dr. Dyson knows far historically better than I do that has been perpetrated in this country for such a long time. And so what bothered me about it was in both instances, I'm very familiar with that kind of racism and bigotry and prejudice. At the same time, and I agree, I would rather know how you feel, let's have that conversation. Right. But a lot of it, the, the, what we saw, the backlash from the right was you're race baiting, you're, you know, this is, you're making this about Christian values rather than let's have that conversation. That's, are, a, that's a great point. And, on, on, and furthermore, what is the deal with the right wing? If you say it's about freedom of speech, why get mad if the left wing responds then? It, more speech is called for, not less speech. So that, again, the kind of persecution complex that the right bears seems to mitigate against any kind of open dialogue that says we're going to challenge what we perceive to be your bigotry. Now, what I'm interested with the log cabin is this not only deal with issues of sexuality deal with issues of race if you're talking about a log cabin Harriet Beecher Stowe has to sneak up in there somewhere so we've got to talk not simply <laughs> about race we got to I mean about uh, about gender and about sexuality let's talk about race and the way they come together gay black Republicans where are they yeah. and then how do we talk about the fact that in American society the mythology that Miss Finney brilliantly spoke about has clouded the ability of the sunshine of enlightenment to get through so how do we have yeah. that kind of open in dialogue and conversation. Yeah, well, Michael, I'll tell you the reason that the, we have the name Log Cabin Republicans, it's a, an homage to Abraham Lincoln and a, rem, and a right. reminder to Republicans around the country that this is a party that has its roots in equality. It's a party that has its roots in emancipation, suffrage, civil rights act, and we want to bring them to a place where they can be accepting well, of equal rights for gays and lesbians. And I just add one thing, okay. is that we are, you know, all right, everyone's, everyone's open up to freedom of speech. The left can say what they like. The right can say what they like. The whole point of proposing this, what we're calling Moonshine Summit, is saying that we're getting to a dangerous point in this country right now where it is almost an us versus them culture, where it's going to be the LGBT community versus the Christian right, or it's going to be, you know, you name, you name your special interest group versus, versus the right. Okay, and we have become such a gerrymandered nation that unless we have these conversations, somehow meet in the middle, somehow find common ground, I we're agree. not going to be in a great well, place politically in this they're country. They're not equal. You do know that. The, 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 the mythology is that all interest, interested parties should come to the table, but let's not pretend that African-American people have had control of the law where that they have indicated that Jim Crow was against poor white people. There is not an equality of means of representing your interests or means of asserting oppression. So when we have this mythology of all come to the table, let's it be, at least be honest about who has been provided opportunity to get their viewpoint broadcast more broadly. And Phil Robertson in the Duck Dynasty is part of a majority white supremacist culture that either consciously or unconsciously incubates hatred toward those who are different. Well, hold on. Before but, we, I want to let Greg respond, but I, but I, I do want to ask you this, because I think one of the important things about having you here is that you are representing, you know, that you are our, our Republican at the table. But as a, a member of the LGBT community, I think people might wonder why you're not more outraged. I mean, you can see the two African-American members of our panel. Sure. I mean, the idea, and for myself, the of hearing... And, and Ryan, as an honorary. <laughs> right, but, it, right, but I mean, the idea is, is that right. why aren't you more outraged? You look at Cracker Barrel, for instance, who sure. uh, yeah. had to apologize to people for daring to react in the way that would have seemed the most culturally sensitive. That company itself, back in 1991, <coughs> instituted a policy of prohibiting the employment of gay and lesbian employees. They fired 17 people as a result of that policy. It was a one-month policy, but even when they got rid of it, no one got their jobs back. 2004, Justice Department investigation down Cracker Barrel consistently mistreated African-American customers, segregating where they sat, allowing white service to refuse to wait on them, seating uh, or serving white customers ahead of them. There, there is a history here, and there's a risk of you guys co-signing that history by not even saying, you know what, we're outraged by the comments themselves, even against your own community. No, that's not. You know, I've been very vocal in terms of my criticism of Phil Robertson's statement, which, by the way, it wasn't just saying that he felt that homosexuality was a sin. I think, as far as I'm concerned, the, 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 the real problem with Phil Robertson's statement was that he said, and I'm paraphrasing somewhat, he said, start with homosexuality and go from there. Right. You're going to have this man sleeping with this man sleeping with those men sleeping with that, those animals. And so it's somehow that homosexuality is this, this, this kind of... And he, and he threw women in there too. Right. So, right. So, equal opportunity. But, but it, w it was somehow that homosexuality is a gateway to all sin. It is, it is, it is the, the original sin in, in some respects. And right. so, and as a Christian man myself, and as a conservative myself, I, I consider myself a conservative Christian, I want to be able to make that case and say, hey, yeah. I'm a conservative Christian too, and, and that is not a proper reading of the Bible. So, if you want the outrage, here it is. I'm giving it to you right now, Joy. But we've said it too. But that, but just have, being outraged doesn't mean that you completely shut someone off. Because if right. we do, we're in a dangerous place as a country politically. Well, Gregory T. Angelo, really appreciate you being here, and I hope you get your what is it? 
Moonshine, Moonshine Summit. Summit. Moonshine Summit. Get it. out there. Mike <laughs> Feeney Have it at in Amy. Cracker Barrel. All Make right. it all, in, all in the family. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> all right. Coming up.